This video will go over section 1.5, part B and C, and section 1.6 on scientific notation. So let's start with um, rules for multiplication and division when you are multiplying and dividing numbers uh, that have significant figures that matter. Whenever you do um, multiplication or division of measurements, uh, you will have to uh, uh, follow this rule. And so the rule says that the answer has the same number of significant figures as the original number with the fewest number of significant figures. For example, if we are um, calculating uh, speed and uh, we are dividing uh, 351.2 miles by 5.5 hours, uh, these, these two numbers are measurements. The first number has four significant figures and the denominator has two significant figures. And when you, you're multiplying them in your calculator, you get this uh, answer, 63.854545. And the unit here would be miles per hour. But we have to take into account the least number of significant figures in the given numbers. And here, uh, the least number would be the two significant figures from 5.5 hours. So we need to keep two significant figures in the end because we should not give more precision because significant figures represent precision. And so we cannot give more precision to the final answer than what we had in the given numbers. So we need to keep two significant figures. And so we will start counting from the left. So we will keep the six, the three, and we will need to uh, decide how, how to drop the rest. What we keep is the three, and after that, we are supposed to drop them. And we need to pay attention to the digit that is just after uh, the first one that needs to be uh, dropped, and it's an eight. So what comes after the three is an eight. Eight is above five, and so we will need to round up. And so the answer should be um, 64. So the six and the three are the two digits to be retained. The eight is the first digit to be dropped because eight is above five, we will round up. If the uh, digit, the first digit to be dropped was between four, between zero and four, uh, we would need to round down and we would just drop all the digits. If the digit is between five and nine, like here, it's an eight, then you need to round up the last digit that needs to be retained by adding one to it. And that's why here the answer would be 64 miles per hour with two sig figs. So let's go over um, how to round uh, first before we apply the rule uh, to keep the number of sig figs for multiplication and division. First, how do we round? Um, let's look at uh, the first row here. The original number or the number provided by the calculator, for example, would be 61.2537. We know we need to round it to two sig figs. So we keep the six, the one, because you already start counting from the left. So keep the six, the one. What comes after the one is a two. So you need to round down because two is below five and you just ignore those numbers and round it to 61. Uh, if we have the same number, but this time we need to run to three sig figs, uh, so, um, by the way, when I say sig figs, it means significant figures. Uh, just to be uh, faster, I will say sig figs. So when we need to run to three sig figs, uh, we count from the left. We keep the six, the one, and the two. 
What comes after the two is a five. Five needs to be rounded up. Uh, so the two will need to be rounded up to a three. And so what you will uh, have for answer is 61.3 when rounded to three sig figs. If we still have the same number, but this time we need to round to one significant figure. So starting counting from the left, we keep the six and that's one significant figure. And so what comes after the six is a one. So we will need to round down. So the six will stay a six and we need to drop the rest. However, here we have to be careful. It was 61 and not just six. So we need to put a zero to replace the one. We need a zero to show that it's in the 60s and not uh, six. So it's very important here to uh, just run this properly and make it 60. And 60 has only one significant figures. Of course, you would not show the decimal point here because otherwise it would be two sig figs. Let's say now we have uh, 27,654 and we need to round it to two sig figs. So counting from the left, we keep the two, the seven. What comes after the seven is a six. So that means we will need to round our seven up to an eight. So we will have two, eight. And that was in the thousands place. The seven is in the thousands place. The comma here indicates the thousands place. So we need to keep it in the thousands place. So for this, even though we uh, have enough significant figures, we will need to add the three zeros to show that the eight is in the thousands place. And so this would be rounded to 28,000 uh, to have two sig figs. So let's do a learning check. Please uh, pause the video so that you work this on your own before you watch the answer. Adjust the following calculated answers to give answers with three significant figures. The measurement, the first measurement here, 824.75 centimeters. If uh, rounded to three significant figures, uh, you would count from the left. Starting from the left, we keep the eight, the two, and the four. What comes after the four is a seven, so we will need to round our four up. So the four will become a five. And then we drop the rest. And because the five is in the ones place, so it will just stay like that, 825 centimeters. Um, problem B, 0 0.112486 grams. When rounded to three significant figures, so you start counting from the left. Here, the zero is not significant. It's only showing you that the dot is here and sometimes it's even omitted. Um, so the zero is not significant. We will start counting um, significant figures from the one, the other one, and then the two. There will be three sig figs. What comes after the two is a four. It's below five, so we run down, which means we drop everything that comes after the two and we keep the two a two. So it's going to be 0 0.112 grams. 8.2 uh, liters rounded to three significant figures. So this one uh, may be tricky at first. Here we have only two sig figs, right? And we need three. So we need to add precision. Uh, this reflects uh, that there is not enough precision in this number. And so we start counting from the eight, we count the eight, the two, and so we need one more significant figure. And here, because it's, it's 8.2, we need to add a zero to show that it's 8.20. And this way we have three significant figures. That zero is significant because we see the decimal point. So that's how you would round 8.2 uh, to three significant figures. So now let's practice the rule for um, 
deciding how many significant figures you keep when you are multiplying or dividing measurements. Let's start with problem A. We have 56.8 times 0 0.37. So again, please pause the video so that you um, solve this on your own before watching the answer. So um, when you are multiplying or dividing numbers, you need to uh, keep the least number of significant figures uh, that you started with. So here we see that we have three significant figures in 56.8 and two significant figures in, in 0.37, right? The zero here is not significant. So multiplying this, the calculator answer is 21.016. You, you know that your calculator doesn't know about significant figures and you have to do the work of deciding how many uh, digits you need to keep. So the calculator will never um, be reliable for that. So the least number of significant figures is two from 0 0.37. So we need to keep two sig figs. Starting counting from the left, we have two and one, that's two sig figs. We will need to drop the rest, especially that uh, what comes after the one, it's a zero. So we just round down and drop everything after the one. And so the um, rounded answer to two sig figs would be 21. Second um, problem, B. So here we have a multiplication uh, in the numerator and then, a div and then divided by another multiplication in the denominator. So um, the calculator answer is, uh, sorry, the, yes, let's look at the number of sig figs first. So 2.075 has four significant figures. Uh, 0.585 has three significant figures. The zero here does not uh, count. It's not significant. 8.42 has three significant figures. And 0.0245 has also three significant figures because the first two zeros are not significant. They are here to show where is the decimal place. So now the calculator answer is 5.88431345. Again, the calculator doesn't know about significant figures, so you have to decide. And we um, saw that the least number of significant figures we have is three significant figures from three of the measurements. So we will need to keep, starting con counting from the left, we need to keep the five, the eight, and another eight. That's three. What comes after the second eight is a four. It's uh, below five, so we need to run down. So we will keep the eight and drop everything that comes after. So the answer is 5.88, rounded to three significant figures. Please note that here, if you did not get this answer from your calculator, and let's say, for example, you got 0 0.003532, etc., from your calculator, let me tell you that's because you are, uh, so your calculator, um, if you enter the numbers the way they are written on the slide here, put the parentheses like they are, um, close the parentheses where they are and then divide and then open the parentheses for 8.32, close them, multiply by the next number. Uh, that's what you will get because you don't show the calculator, you don't tell the calculator that the two numbers in the denominator needs to be multiplied before the denominator is, is dividing the numerator. So the calculator, uh, when you get that answer of 0 0.003532, it's because it did the multiplication in the numerator and then divided by 
and then multiplied this intermediate answer by 0 0.0245 instead of dividing by 0 0.0245. So to avoid this kind of problems, you need to uh, tell your calculator that the denominator is a multiplication that needs to be done before uh, you divide the numerator with it. So there's two options to type this in the calculator. Either you type 2.075 times 0 0.585 divided, open the parentheses, 8.42 times 0 0.0245, close the parentheses, and then enter. And you would see that the answer should be what is the displayed answer here. Another way to do it is by doing 2.075 times 0.585 divided by 8.42 and divided again by 0 0.0245, right? Either you tell the calculator that it needs to do the multiplication first before dividing and for this you will open the parentheses and multiply the two numbers and then close the parentheses, or you divide by each denominator separately. Okay, this is very important to be aware of how your calculator is uh, functioning because it can give you a wrong answer if you uh, don't know or don't pay attention to how you type your calculations. Now let's look at um, problem C. 25.0 divided by 5.00. Uh, we have three sig figs in the numerator because the two, the five, and the zero count because we see the decimal point, so that zero is significant. In the denominator, we have 5.00, and everything counts as well, so we also have uh, three significant figures. Those two zeros uh, in the 5.00 are significant because we see the decimal point again. So the least number of uh, significant figures here is three from both numbers. 25 divided by five is equal to five and the calculator will give you just five, right? And so you have to uh, pay attention to how many sig figs you need to keep. And here five, the calculator answer is just one sig figs. And we said we need to keep three sig figs. So how do we, um, um, how do we solve that? We um, will add zeros after the decimal point, after the five, to uh, show um, three significant figures. And we will add two zeros to make it three significant figures. The 5.00. Um, is three significant figures. So uh, unfortunately, the rule is different for uh, when you are adding and subtracting numbers uh, that have significant figures. And so the rule this time is um, to keep the same number of decimal places as the original number with the fewest number of decimal places. So this time we are not looking at significant figures, we are looking at decimal places only. Decimal places are the number of digits that comes to the right of the decimal point. So in the example displayed here, 10.11 kilograms, there is two decimal places, the one and the one. In 3.6 kilograms, uh, there is one decimal place. So uh, the least number of decimal places is just one. So even though when you're doing the subtraction of 10.11 minus 3.6 and you get 6.51, that would be the calculator answer, you need to keep only one decimal place because um, the fewest number of decimal places was one. So to, to do additions and subtraction, one uh, way to visualize that is to write uh, the addition and subtraction uh, vertically. 
by aligning the numbers according to their uh, decimal point. Just like you need to do it when you are uh, doing this by hand. And uh, you can easily see the one that is the closest to the decimal point. And here it's the 3.6. That's the one that has the fewest number of decimal places. So that means you need to keep one decimal place in the uh, answer. And so 6.51, uh, we need to keep only one decimal place, which is going to be the 5. What comes after the 5 is a 1, so you need to round down. And so you drop the 1 and you keep the 5. And so the answer would be 6.5 kilograms in this case. So let's practice that with those uh, learning checks. Uh, first an addition and then a subtraction. Again, please pause the video and work these problems before you watch the answer. So 10 point, 10, sorry, not 10. Um, 104.45 milliliters plus 0.838 milliliters plus 46 milliliters. So the best is to write them vertically um, and align the decimal uh, points and then uh, count the number of decimal places. So in 100.45, there is two decimal places, or we can say that it's to the hundreds place. In 0.838 milliliters, there is three dec decimal places, or it stops at the thousands place. And in 46, there is no decimal places because it stops at the ones place. The decimal point here is uh, implied, uh, it is implied that it is just after the six, right? To the right of the six. So the least number of decimal places is zero decimal places, which means you run to the ones place. The calculator answer is 151.288. Um, so, Keeping zero decimal places means you will keep 151 and then stop there. There is no decimal uh, needed. So the rounded answer would be 151 milliliter. My problem B, that's a subtraction. Again, I uh, advise that you uh, write them on top of each other by aligning the decimal point. And you will easily see that 14.82 um, has two decimal places and 153.247 has three decimal places. So the least number of decimal places is two. The calculator answer is 138.427. So keeping two decimal places means you will keep, so you see the dot, you count the four and the two, that's two decimal places. What comes after the two is a seven, so you need to round up. So the two will become a three, and then you drop the seven. 138.43 grams is the rounded answers to two decimal places, or to the hundreds place. So most of the time, um, it's uh, you have calculations to do where you have uh, multi-step uh, calculations where the operation is different. For example, you have a multiplication and then um, um, an addition first to do or, or the reverse. And so you need to apply the rule to each operator uh, by applying the specific rule for that operator. And you need to follow the PEMDAS uh, order of operation. And so you will need to um, only round uh, the final answer. To avoid rounding errors in multi-step calculations, round only the final answer. 
do not round intermediate steps. It is, it is written in red here because it is important. Otherwise you have rounding errors at the end typically. So it is important uh, to keep track of the uh, numbers the, without rounding them. Keep track of the number of sig figs you would keep if you were to round, but, but you do not round. And then uh, only at the end you uh, round the final answer. So let's look at an example for that. Let's say we have to multiply 6.78 times 5.903 times, open the parentheses, 5.489 minus 5.01, close the parentheses. So here we have parentheses, and if we follow the PEMDAS rules, PEMDAS means parentheses, exponent, uh, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, right? You need to do the operations in that order. So here, the priority is to do what is in the parentheses. So do the subtraction first. So you will do the subtraction and calculate the intermediate answer without rounding it. So 5.489 minus 5.01 is equal to 0 0.479. So you write the full answer without rounding it. Uh, but uh, you need to uh, estimate what would, what, uh, you, how you would round if you were to round, uh, if you could round the intermediate steps. And here it's a subtraction. So the rule is to keep the least number of decimal places. And uh, 5.489 has three decimal places and 5.01 has two decimal places. So two decimal places is the least number. So we need, you, you would need to keep two um, decimal places. So you would need to keep the four and the seven. But you keep uh, the nine when you do the multiplication that comes next. So now you do the multiplication in the calculator and the calculator answer is given in blue. It's 19.1707. And it's that because you did not round the uh, intermediate answer. So now it's a multiplication and the rule for multiplications is to keep the least number of significant figures. So we need to estimate the number of significant figures in the first number. Uh, 6.78 has three significant figures. 5.903 has four significant figures. And 0 0.47, if it was rounded according to the rule for the subtraction, it would be two significant figures, right? We have underlined here to remind us that it would be two significant figures. So we need to keep two significant figures for the final answer. And um, so 19.1707, you would keep the one, the nine, that's two significant figures. What comes after the nine is the one. So you run down, you keep the nine and drop everything after. And so it would be rounded to 19. Let's try this with so this learning check. Uh, again, please uh, pause the video and do this uh, on your own before you check the answer. I just want to say that here we need to calculate an average of three temperature measurements with the correct number of significant figures. To calculate an average, you add the measurements and then you divide by the number of measurements and here we have three measurements so we will divide by three so first you add 68.62 plus 100.884 plus 5.2 if you align them according to their uh, decimal point you see um, that the least number of decimal places uh, is two, uh, the, uh, it's one, sorry, for the 5.2. Because we are adding here, uh, we don't see a plus sign, but we are adding them. So the rule is to keep the least number of decimal places. And here it's only one decimal place. 
the calculator answer here for the addition is 174.704. And so if we were to round, we would round to one decimal place, which means we would keep the 0.7. And what comes after is the zero, so we just would keep 0.7 and drop everything after. However, we keep this whole number, 174.704, and divide by three now. Divide by three because we have three measurements and to get the average, we need to divide by the number of measurements. The calculator answer is 58.23467. Here we are dividing by three. So it's a division. And so what matters now is the number of significant figures, the least number of significant figures. Um, so the three here is a number obtained by counting the number of temperatures, right? It's an exact number. An exact number do not limit the number of significant figures. Um, exact number are, have an unlimited number of significant figures. You could write the three like 3.000 and have many, many zeros um, uh, after, and that would be the same thing. That's what exact number mean. It, they are not limiting the number of significant figures. It's like they have an unlimited number of significant figures. So here, the three here is not a problem. It's not limiting our number of significant figures. It's the um, addition, you know, the result of the addition here, the 174.704, uh, that is limiting the number of significant figures. and. If we had rounded uh, during the addition, we would have kept one decimal, one decimal place, which translates into four significant figures now when we are counting significant figures. The one, the seven, the four, and the point seven. Four significant figures. So we need to keep four significant figures for the final answer. And so 58.23467 becomes 58.23, uh, four significant figures. That would be our temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Oops. So now we will talk about scientific notation. Scientific notation is necessary when you are dealing with science because in science there is a lot of very, very large numbers and very, very small numbers. And we need to uh, be able to write them without all the zeros in front or all the zeros uh, at the end and to make them easier to read and more manageable uh, numbers are written in scientific notation when they are too large or too small. So a number written in scientific notation will have this um, uh, overall uh, shape. It, there will be uh, the coefficient or what we also call the decimal part, which is represented by the Y here. It would be a number between one and 10. So it's a decimal number. It's never zero point something. It's always at least one point something up to nine point something. It cannot be 10. So that's the decimal part also called the coefficient. And then you multiply by 10 raised to the power of X. X is called the exponent and X is a any positive or negative whole number. It has to be an integer. And so what does it mean? Um, when you have X that is positive, so when the exponent is positive, it is equivalent to multiplying by 10 X time, which means it's equivalent to multiplying the Y, the coefficient X time by 10. So when you're multiplying x times by 10, it's a large number. So positive exponent mean large numbers. When the exponent is negative, um, it is equivalent to dividing by 10 x time. 
So you're taking your coefficient and you're dividing it n time, you know, x times by 10 if uh, x is negative. So that means if you're dividing y, you know, x times by 10, it's going to be a very small number. So negative exponent mean you have a very small number. So let's learn how to convert a standard number to a scientific notation. For example, we will convert these uh, numbers, uh, 2,500 and 0 .036 into scientific notation. So let's start with 2,500. First, you will want to move the decimal point to give a number between 1 and 10. Remember that the coefficient of your scientific notation should be a number between 1 and 10. The decimal point here is not shown, but it's implied that it is uh, to the right of the last zero, right? It's 2000, so the second zero, then the dot should be there after the, to the right of the zero. So to make it a number between 1 and 10, you will need to move to the left because you want to make it a smaller number than 2000. So you will move to the left one time, two time, and three times until you get between the 2 and the 5. This way you have a number between 1 and 10. 2.5 is a number between 1 and 10. So we have moved the um, decimal point three times to the left. And so we will multiply 2.5 uh, by 10 and we will raise it to the third power because we moved three times. And next you need to decide is it a positive exponent or a negative exponent. And here um, we started with a very large number. And remember we said very large number have positive exponent. So it will stay uh, like this, 10 to 10.5 times 10 to the third, because it's a positive number and it means that you take 2.5 and multiply it three times by 10 to retrieve the number in standard no uh, notation. Now let's um, look at the other uh, number we have here, 0 0.036. We want to move the decimal point such that we will uh, get a number between 1 and 10. And here, uh, going to the left would not make sense because there's nothing there. So you will need to move to the right and uh, you will move one time and two times to be between the 3 and the 6 because then 3.6 is a number between 1 and 10. So you need to stop there. So we've moved the decimal point to uh, between the 3 and the 6 two times. So it's going to be 3.6. You, you drop the zeros in the front, of course. So 3.6 times 10 to the uh, 2 because we moved uh, decimal point two times. And here you see that it's a negative exponent because we started with a small number, right? We started with a small number, so the, the exponent must be negative because when it's negative, it means here that you divide two times by 10. You divide 3.6 two times by 10 and you get back 0 0.036 in standard notation. So let's practice by writing these numbers in scientific notation. Write uh, 3,500 in scientific notation. So here the decimal point is um, implied being uh, right after the last zero to the right of that zero. So we need to move the decimal point to get a number between 1 and 10. So we will move to the left and we will move one, two, three times to the left to be between the three and the five. Next, uh, we need to take that 3.5 and multiplying by 10 to the power of three. 
and we need to decide if it stays a positive three or a negative three. Here, because we started with a large number, 3,500, so uh, the, the exponent should be positive. And so um, the answer is 3.5 times 10 to the third. So number B, 0.000016. To uh, write this in scientific notation, you will need to move the decimal point to the right to make a number between one and 10. So you will move one, two, three, four, five times to the right until you are between the one and the six. That's a number between one and 10. And then you will take 1.6 times 10 to the five because you moved five times to the right. Next, you need to decide if you keep it a five, positive five or a negative five. And um, here we start with a very small number. So that means we will need to divide five times by 10. And so that's gonna be a negative exponent. So the answer is 1.6 times 10 to the negative five. Uh, number C, 8.012. You may think it's a trick. <laughs> it's already a number between one and 10, right? So that means, do you move the decimal point? No, you don't move it. So you will write 8.012 times 10, and you will say that you moved zero times. So it's gonna be 10 to the zero. And if you do that in your calculator, 8.012 times 10 to the zero, you will see that it's exactly 8.012 because the times 10 to the zero is equal to one. By definition, something to the power uh, zero is equal to one. Uh, and uh, number D, uh, it's a very small number. Uh, we will need to move the decimal point uh, to the right to uh, uh, go towards uh, non-zero digits. So we will move one, two, three, four, five, six times until we are between the eight and the seven. So it's going to be 8.706. It's a number between one and 10 and times 10 and the power will be six. And we need to decide, is it positive six or negative six? And here again, we started with a very small number. So we need to divide six times by 10. And so it's gonna be a negative six, negative exponent to um, show that you divide six times by 10, 8.706 to get the number in standard notation. Let's practice more with uh, these numbers. 0 0.000, 0008, sorry. So what is the correct scientific notation for this? Again, you need to pause the video and think about this before watching the answer. So here, um, let's do the operation where you move the decimal point. We would move it to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six times. So the exponent has to be a six. So it's eight times 10 to the six. And now is it negative six or positive six? And here we started with a small number. It's gonna be a negative exponent. So answer two was the correct answer. Eight times 10 to the negative six. 72,000, exactly. Um, so Let's move the decimal point, even though it's not shown, it's implied. It's uh, to the right of the zero, the last zero. So let's move it from here to the left to make a number between one and 10. We will need to move one, two, three, four times to the left until it's between the seven and the two. So it's gonna be 7.2 times 10 raised to the, uh, we said four times, right? To the one, two, three, four times to the left. 
So it's going to be 7.2 times 10 to the fourth. And we need to decide if it's a positive 4 or a negative 4. And here we start with a large number. So it's going to be a positive 4. And answer 1 is the correct answer. Uh, number C, 0 0.000966. So let's move the decimal point until we reach a number between 1 and 10. So we will move it 1, 2, 3, 4 times to the right until we get between the 9 and the 6. So it's going to be 9.66 times 10 to the, uh, we said 4. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yes, 10 to the four. And we need to decide if it's positive four or negative four. And here we started with a small number. So we need to divide four times by four. And so it's going to be a negative exponent. 9.66 times 10 to the negative four is the correct answer. So, um, we need also to be able to do the reverse uh, um, process, which is converting a number in scientific notation back to standard notation. So we said that when the exponent is positive, we need to uh, multiply x time by 10. And so that means you will move the decimal point to the right to make it a larger number. So let's say you have 2.800 times 10 to the second. So here the second power is a positive power, which means you multiply two times by 10. And so that means moving the decimal point two times to the right to make it a larger number. So it's going to be uh, uh, 280 because you move the decimal point be behind the eight and then behind the zero, the first zero. So 280.0. Here, um, the zero is significant. The last zero, the last two zeros are significant. Right, those two zeros in scientific notation are significant. So we need to keep those two zeros, one before the decimal point and the other one after the decimal point to keep four sig figs. So you will need to pay attention to significant figures uh, when you do these operations of, you know, changing between uh, notations. Now let's say it's instead of uh, 2.800 times 10 to the second, we have 2.80 times 10 to the negative second. So when the exponent is negative, you will need to move the decimal point um, x places to the left. You will need to uh, divide x time by uh, 10. So make it a small number. And for this, you need to move to the left. So you will need to add zeros to show where is uh, the decimal point. So here, starting from the 2.880, you will move to the left in front of the two and then another time to the left. So that means um, it's going to be 0 0.0280, right? So starting from the two and between the two and the eight, you move two times to the left. And it's a small number because the exponent was negative and it's like dividing two times by 10 in this example. So let's practice that uh, with this learning check and um, let's uh, select the correct standard number for each of these um, examples. So again, please pause the video to write, to um, work on this before watching the answer. So problem A, 2.0 times 10 to the negative 2. What is it in standard notation? So here the exponent is negative. It's negative two. So you, that means you will need to move the decimal point two places 
to the left to make it a small number because it's a negative exponent. So moving the decimal point two times to the left means that you will have point zero two zero, right? And so the correct answer will be the, the third because you want uh, to have moved two places from the right from to the right of the two, two places to the left. And um, notice here that the point zero that was in the scientific notation is a significant digit. So you need to keep the zero after the two uh, to make it two uh, significant figures. 1.8 times 10 to the fifth. Um, so here we need to make it a large number because the exponent is positive. Um, we will need to move the decimal point five times to the right to make it a large number. So that means um, it's either one or three. So let's count the number of places. So starting between the one and the eight, you move five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you will need four zeros after the eight. And so answer one is the correct answer. Because if you count starting from between the one and the eight, you will need to move one, two, three, four, five times to the right to get um, 180,000. So number C, 3.3 times 10 to the one, uh, it's a positive exponent. You will need to multiply one time by 10. And 3.3, .3, uh, the decimal point will move one time to the right to make it a larger number. And so 33 is the answer there, right? We know that 3.3 .3 times 10 is 33. So now, hopefully, you have a scientific calculator with you. If you don't, uh, go grab it. Uh, we need to learn how to enter a numbers in scientific notation in calculator. Um, you can enter a number written in scientific calculation, uh, scientific notation, sorry, uh, on many calculators using the EE key or the EXP key. Um, you need to find that key on your calculator. And so, Typically, that key will be entered after the coefficient of your scientific notation, and it will represent times 10, and you will only need to enter the power after that. And so the calculator display can be very, can, they can vary a lot from a calculator to another. And so these are examples of some kinds of uh, display that we see. Notice how in the display, the E stands for times 10 to the power, and then you have the exponent. Don't forget that you need to um, enter the negative sign when you have a negative exponent. I advise you to um, have the TI30X2S calculator if you do not have a scientific calculator already. I strongly recommend that you buy this one. It's uh, an easy one to use, and I have explanations on how to use it um, whenever we will need to learn how to use it in this course. So I strongly recommend this one. So let's say we have to enter negative 1.23 times 10 to the negative 3 in the calculator. So in this calculator, in this particular calculator, uh, the way you do it is you press, the negative sign is uh, the key uh, between the dot and the enter button at the bottom of the calculator, and this indicates negative. It's not the subtraction sign. Be careful to not confuse the subtraction sign with the negative sign. So negative, type 1.23, and then to get the EE um, 
the EE, uh, you know, scientific notation in this calculator, it's the second function of the x minus one uh, key. So you will need to push the second button and then type the x minus one um, button. And you see that above that x minus one button, there is the EE written in uh, above the key. And whenever you have something written above the key, to get that, you need to do the second function of that key. And so when you do this, there is a little E, uh, capital E that appears after the 1.23. And that E stands for times 10, and it's waiting now for the exponent. So there's no need to type times 10 and the uh, uh, carrot key or the hat key. What you type after that is the exponent. And here it's a negative exponent. So you need to, to do the negative sign three enter. If your scientific calculator is in um, a standard uh, display, it will show the answer as negative 0 0.00123. And that's the standard notation for this number in which is given in scientific notation. So that's the way to uh, use this calculator. Um, when a calculator display appears in scientific notation, it is shown as a number between one and 10, followed by a space and a power. So here, uh, this slide is showing you the calculator display we saw earlier. Some calculators show them like this. If it is shown like that on your calculator, on the paper, you should express it like this. 7.52 times 10 to the fourth. You should not uh, rewrite exactly what is on your calculator display because it is not proper uh, scientific notation. For proper scientific notation, you need to write times 10 and then the exponent. So make sure you do this properly on paper. Um, on many scientific calculators, uh, you can also switch between a scientific display and a normal display. And for this, uh, typically there will be a key labeled SCI for scientific. Sometimes you will need to press the second function or third function of a key. So in the calculator that I recommend, if you have that one, the TI30X2S, let's say uh, you keep a number in the display so that you will see how it changes the way the calculator displays that number. So to change the display mode of the calculator, uh, you need to press on that calculator the second function of the degree key. The degree key is right next to the second key. When you look at that degree key, you see above it's written SCI, SCI slash ENG, and it means scientific slash engineering notation. So the second function of the degree key is allowing you to change the mode, the display mode of the calculator to scientific or engineering or back to uh, floating because it's calling floating the normal notation here. FLO floating is called the floating point notation, decimal, regular, standard notation. All of these are synonymous. SCI refers to scientific notation and ENG refers to engineering notation. So when you have pressed the second and the RG key, it displays um, those three options, either flow, SCI, or engineering. You use the arrows to select the one you want. Once it's uh, underlying the one you want, like SCI here, enter, and then it will display the number you had in there in scientific notation. And so you can flip between the two, um, you know, floating point and scientific. Please do not use the engineering because engineering sometimes limits the number of decimal places you 
it displays, so please don't use that. So go back to, uh, you know, change again to flow and enter, and you will get the same number now in, in uh, normal notation. And so just flip between the two and it's the same number, but displayed in scientific notation or in floating point notation. It is important that you know um, that you can do that, right? It's going to be very helpful. So please uh, don't think it's um, a little thing. It's, it's a big uh, help if you know how to do this.